Monday is obviously the day when our showbiz types tell you what exciting showbiz adventures we've been up to over the showbiz weekend. So in true Radio Times fashion, I've written out Mark Lamar's weekend in the life of, here we go, one o'clock, woke up, played some records, watched some telly, went to bed. That was Friday and Saturday and Sunday. And while I hate to name drop, Michael Jackson. Ian McMillan's back. Howdy. Thanks for coming in here. And I'm sorry about the speed of tonight because I'm I'm on a Diet Coke buzz, basically. I've been drinking Diet Coke all day and I'm talking very, very fast. And you're getting thinner by the second. Probably, but I'm hoping you'll slow me down. Right, I'll try my best. Being, uh, a, being the relaxed Yorkshireman and everything and just keep me at an even keel. All right, I will. I'm so relaxed. Um, last time I was on, I said this homework, the history of the quiff, and I just thought of it. It just popped into my head. And I wasn't sure what we'd get. We've had the bulgingest sack ever. It's wonderful. We've had literally, literally hundreds and hundreds of replies. You have, and I've, I was a bit annoyed because I, I got in, uh, a couple, you know, went home over the weekend, went back to London, got back, and there was one card for me oh. yeah, when I got back. After doing you know, eight hours on 1FM last week, one card, and I couldn't, didn't know what that was about. But the last time you were on was Thursday, and the last time I was on was a month ago, so it builds. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah, it's like the dam busters, it tends to build. Uh, they're, they're quite odd. This is a good one from Mick Hudson. It's called A Very Brief History of the Quiff. A quiff, when stiff, can make all the diff, but its history remains a mystery. That's a good one. That's good. It was I, in don't, I, don't, I don't know if a quiff should be stiff. Well, yeah, that's, that's right. That's true, yeah. Well, forget it then, all right. That doesn't win anything. Are there, are there prizes for this, by the way? No, well, just my voice reading them out is a kind of prize. Can't, prize enough. I think. Uh, how about this? This is a good one from uh, Simon Beardsley of Dorking. The history of the quiff. It's full of great rhymes, this. It's got a picture of Cliff on the front. Cliff's quiff was triff. Meaner than a mastiff, easy as a spliff. Cliff's quiff was triff, stiff like a riff, higher than the pontiff, even if, if you took a sniff, there was a whiff of jiff. So his <laughs> quiff was held up by a jiff. That's Cliff's Possibly. Thing. Possibly, yes, allegedly. Um, here's one. Now, this, this one, uh, he's, he refers Cliff, to as flat. Cliff doesn't have a quiff anymore, does he? It, it's kind of move it but, era. Yeah, but he doesn't. Cliff. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's wrong to write no, about well, Cliff, yeah. Cliff, but I'm just saying that people, like the old teddy boys, when they have a quiff, it's very important to them. And over the years, as they recede, the quiff gets further and back on the head. So eventually they've got like, a quiff on the back of their head and completely bald on top. So that's how the ponytail started? Possibly, yeah. It's kind of reverse quiff, like the one Roger Dolce had on that film. In on fact, I've just done a, a history of the quiff, haven't I? Of, of mom, one man's quiff. That's true. It's another man's poison. Didn't, didn't mind me. But this, this is, uh, he calls it flowery. Jeremy Latham of Ealing. It is a bit, but it's very odd, this. The young quiff is made with used matchsticks in quiet rooms on afternoons. There is no such thing as tasting quiffs, just good quiffs and bad quiffs. The quiff should lick the air like orgasm on fertile earth. The old quiff is like a dying bird in flight, coughing on an elephant. Hope you like it. Sorry if it's a bit flowery. Enjoy the show. I, just, I hope you understand it, is what you should have said. What's all the bit about matchsticks at the beginning? I can understand that. That's somebody who's sitting there in the rooms, and they're making their quiff. Oh, building it, I see. Building yeah. it with a matchstick. I don't understand the bit. The old quiff is like a dying bird in flight, coughing on an elephant. Well, I, I, I like that sometimes, that imagery that you don't... You get it a lot in rock songs, not mm. so much in, uh, in poems about quiffs. No. Although it is a new art form, you know, who are we to judge it so early on in its career? I think if you understand poems, there's no point in writing them. Like the bloke said when somebody just done a dance, and they said, what's that dance mean? They said, I'll tell you what it meant, I want to dance it. So well, I mean, what about, um, so we'll go no more roving? That you can, you yeah, that's obviously, that? yeah, I can't stand that. It's about, so we'll go no more roving. Well, what's that mean then? Well, he's not going to go roving anymore. Is he? Yeah. Is that what it means? Him, him well. and someone else, that's why he said we. So, we'll... Not what, they're not going to go roving anymore? No, that's what it's about. No, no point writing it was that, about, wasn't it, Byron? I thought it was about moles. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some more quiz with poems later on, I think. And, and possibly your explanation to that last comment. I hope it's a tongue-in-cheek tribute, because there was a time a couple of years ago, wasn't there, when there was an ABBA revival, and everyone I met was saying, oh, I've always loved ABBA, which to me equated to saying, is the same as saying, uh, I've always loved really bad music. And that was Costello went right down in my estimation when he appeared in the documentary about ABBA, saying he'd always loved them. But then he went up again when he appeared in the Philip K. Dick documentary a few weeks ago, then down again when he appeared on the Dusty Springfield documentary last week. Not because I don't like Dusty Springfield, just because I realised, you know, it's that horrible realisation that you're here 
beer, I would say, something nice about anyone for a few quid. And I'm looking forward to the forthcoming Cranky's retrospective, in which Costello claims Jeanette was always a big influence, and apparently he's got slots on That's My Dog, That's My Cat, and Whose Beard Is It Anyway? He's just one of those TV tarts at the moment. Have you ever, Ian McMillan, have you ever had that when, when a hero just lets you down big time? Yes, uh, John Wayne. I was always a big, I don't know, I just... No, why did he let you down? Not why was he a hero? Because I, I always saw his name and was like, really, but then at the first time, this is true, my dad used to say, John Wayne, what a hero. I never seen him on the telly, I thought he'd be great, John Wayne. And he came on, just a big fat blow with a cowboy hat <laughs> on. I thought, well, he's when he actually meet him. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> but you never um, even met him. No, it's true, but I mean, I, he met me, as it were, on the yeah. screen. Um, you've got another point from Dorking. Dorking must be a, a hotbed of poetry, but two points from Dorking. Poetry hotspot at the moment. It certainly is, and it's another history of the quiff from Tom Burton. Pilot was the first, Nero at his cursed. Canute found his burst, and Churchill had the worst. Which is true. These are just lies, these poems, I've noticed. Yeah, they're not no, true. No one knows if Pilot had a, had a quiff. No, that's true. Probably the band Pilot, they might have had quiffs at but one point or whatever. Poems are fiction. They're not true. Oh, are they? sorry. That's right, anyway. Sorry. Uh, coming on the train, across on the train, this is one of my poems, just wrote it. I was on the train today, coming from Barnsley to Manchester, and I always sit and uh, watch what's happening. And these two girls were sat opposite me, and they were amazing. They were on their way to Alderley Edge, a posh part of Cheshire. And every w one, one would say something, and the other one said, Oh no, shut up! So I just wrote it down. And it's like, that sounds like the like Oscar Wilde manner, a it, rating to the rest of the train. They were, the whole train could hear them. People I hate outside that when, the train could hear them. Don't you hate that when people make a big show on a train when you're just trying to sit there and read? Well, I suppose it was good, for, good me. for you. Yes, yeah. it was. I didn't have to lean quite right over. So this is exactly what they said. None of this is made up. I wish it was. I went to St. Petersburg and I saw 24 museums in three days. All the tours were in Russian. Miss Peters said, if you've got any problems about boys or sex or drugs, don't bring them to me. Oh no, shut up. My French exchange was weird. The family were deranged. Well, down at heel, really, more than deranged. Oh, no, shut up. My nose has <laughs> shrunk. I have such a small nose, I've just noticed it. There's a whole pile of stainless steel sinks over there. Just think, if Great Britain was as big as this table, then this train would be like the universe. Oh, no, shut up. Sheep have an easy life. Dairy cows have an easy life. What do we get from sheep? Lamb, of course. Oh, no, shut up. <laughs> it was better said, what's that fat man writing down? That's when I stopped. But that's, what did we get from sheep? What sort of question is that's that? That's what she said. She, she was thinking. Her brain was going, her, her brow was footed. What do we get from sheep? And her mate thought for a bit and went, lamb. <laughs> didn't even think of wool. No, the wool. Because, of course, you get lamb from lambs, don't you? Of course you do. Well, they, they didn't know that. Well, earlier on, I read some poems that, <laughs> that were, you couldn't, you, we couldn't understand the poems. I wonder if they're really. listening, those girls. I think they are. I hope so. I, tried, I smiled at him and tried to mouth the words, I'm on Mark Lamar tonight, but they just thought I was a mad fat nutter, which of course I am. <laughs> this afternoon. Oh, shut up. I thought, oh, shut up. Oh, no, shut up. What do you get from sheep? Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier on, we, wrote some, we did some poems that we couldn't understand. And that's a good thing, I think, poems you can't understand. And this afternoon, I was doing a, a thing at a college near Barnsley, and all these people were a bit, they were a bit worried about poetry. So I said, what we'll do is, we'll write a line each about anything like, fold it over, pass it on, fold it over, pass it on, and you end up with these amazing things like this. How about this? Now, this could be by Ted Hughes, our poet laureate, or any of these uh, new generation poets that I'm not one of, but I'm not bitter. It's so hot in here, I could take off my socks. The window went down with a resounding crash. I could drink a well dry. Her glasses reflected the window. Buttercups, yellow and many. He came down the chimney. Covered in soot. Now, if we were at a poetry reading at that point, we'd all go, hmm. Well, were they and allowed to read the line before? No, we... no, it's completely. They don't oh, know. I see. So you end up with these wonderful things. They're the Surrealists invented it. It's called the Exquisite Corpse. The Surrealists used to sit around and play this just because they had nothing better to do apart from wear those silly hats. They, were, yeah. they really were dull people, weren't they? The, the Surrealists? Surrealists, yeah, because you would imagine they're going to be exciting. Like I thought with John Wayne. I thought it was going to be exciting, but the Surrealists, just these old men in gabardines with big hats on. Strange. Time for one more poem about the history of the quiff? Plenty of time. Oh, good. Because <laughs> I've got 5,000 here. What a response. Except somebody, what's he called? Graham Cunningham from Edinburgh. The history of the quiff. They're not called <laughs> quiffs. Graham, what are you talking about? There was a quiff. Get out of that. <laughs> well, what's he written? That's right away. Right. What's, what's he say about it? Right. I want to see what he rhymes with quiff. <laughs> what do you get from a quiff? Myth, I suppose, is all you can rhyme with it. There, once there was a quiff called Brian. The quiff had a brother, but he shot him. The Quith had a sister, he shot her too. The Quith was sentenced to life imprisonment as expected. That's Edinburgh. Gotcha. They have a festival there every year. <laughs> they have an arts festival. Oh, people it's go. probably going to sell out this year. I think it will, because the Quith. Here's one called The History of an Electric Quith. Now, this is that. Uh, this is by a guy called David Harmer from Doncaster, uh, a, a poetry, poetic place, but like Doki. It started off small, just a scratch on the front of his head. 
slowly thickened until it was bushy and sprouting. Long dark lines, like a street map of Memphis. It gulped down brill cream, thirsty for grease, sludged on like cement. It peaked and stiffened into its final mighty spike that drove holes in walls and poked the eyeballs out of barmaids. Like a unicorn, he was fabulous. His quiff quivered, conducting magic in potent riffs down his drainpipes until the buttons of his zoot suit sparkled in the rock and roll dark. What right, did you uh, mean about moles earlier on? Well, it's moles. I'll go on a mole roving. Mm. It's obvious, isn't it? Because the mole wouldn't rove, would it? Because it couldn't go on no more a roving. Because, as you know, roving is Welsh for mole. Oh, is it? As in, <laughs> roving. You've suddenly made so much more sense. Well, there you go. All we right. haven't we haven't spoken about Poetry Week yet, because uh, I don't know how much involved you were, but it, I'm sure you're bored of talking about it now. What, Poetry Week on 1FM? Yeah. That was a good idea, I think. It's, it's a shame, though, because sometimes I go to schools and they say, we're having a book week. And I said, well, can't you have a book year? Mm. I mean, it's, and it's like when you get... I always think it's weird when they have, like, National Deaf Week, and it's like, can we ignore deaf people then for the next 51 weeks? Well, that's the thing. Just I mean, a week for them. If, if, if 1FM could carry on doing poetry all year... That would be great. And in fact, this programme does it. I mean, this programme is doing it first, and then the rest of one of them thought, oh, that's a good idea, let's do it and all. And I think it'd be good if we oh, carried on doing wish it. I I could take credit. Well, obviously can't. There you go. Here's one from uh, Ollie, who was only 13, from Upton Cross in Cornwall. I've been there, did a gig at the Sturt Centre. Good venue. It's called The History of the Quiff. Good title. Originally intended as portable surf, but ended as Teddy Boy's Pride. The fun's no more. We lock the door on Bill Cream, homicide. And if Ollie's really 30, I think that's a cracker. That what a great good. line. I bought right was, near the end. That was, uh, the I was, was full thing, of emotion yeah. there. And that thing about t portable surf. What a great image for a quiff. Ollie, he's only 13. Here's one from Paul Cookson. I bet he's in his late 40s. He lives in Retford, which is the same thing as being in his late 40s. Why would you bet that? Because he lives in Retford. Uh, All people in Retford are in their late 40s. You've been to Retford, the Porterhouse Club? No. Well, I mean, just imagine a room full of people in the late 40s. That's Retford. Okay. And on the sixth day, God created man rubbing his clay-stained fingers through his omnipresent, perfectly formed and naturally buoyant quiff, he saw that it was good, very good. Some time later, after the serpent tempted Adam and Eve, God looked down once more and noticed not only the fall of man, but the fall of Adam's quiff as well. And he saw that it was not so good. In fact, it was bloody awful. Hmm, thought God. And he went off to create Brill Cream and corns. <laughs> That's good, but I thought if you were going to do a biblical one about the quiff, you should have done Samson, really. Because, you know, Samson's the big hair story, isn't it, in the That's Bible? That's true, when his quiff got cut off, that was the end of it, wasn't it? That's true. Here's can one. I, can I put in for a second? With this Please one do. in a second, but I just remembered, I've got bits of paper lying around everyone, there's the winners to the Benjamin Zephaniah competition. So, here we go. David, uh, David Lusby from Small Heath in Birmingham is going to see Benj Benjamin Zephaniah on Friday, well, I hope he is. Adam uh, Narkowitz from Gwyneth in Wales. I don't know why he's going to go from Wales to Birmingham. And Darren Ellis from Peterhead in Aberdeen. He's obviously not going to go, is he? This is just someone who's going to show off to his mates, oh, yeah, I won something once. And what's the point of winning something? You know, just, just to think, oh, God, my luck's changed. I've won something in Birmingham, but I live in Aberdeen. They could have reinstated the late-night Aberdeen-Birmingham bus. Possibly. Or maybe he's on his way to Birmingham. Maybe he's hitchhiking now. Yes, he could be. I've won it. I'm going to go. Sean McGee from Northfield in Birmingham and James McKenzie from Shepherds Bush in London. So, good luck. Uh, well, well done. You've already had your good luck there, apart from uh, James McKenzie of Shepherds Bush in London, because you're not going, are you? You liar. Sorry, carry on <laughs> with your, carry on with your uh, poems. By the way, for next, for next time I'm on, um, I'd like people to write me a life in ten lines. Somebody's life. Encapsulate a life. It could be a tragically cut-off short life. It could be a long and Why don't we do John life. Wayne's life? John Wayne's life. Okay, the, we'll do The that. disappointment of John Wayne's life in ten lines. Okay, then, there's the subject. The disappointment of John Wayne's life. Substitute your own uh, film star if you want. Could be the disappointment of Owen Nairs' life, because he was a little-known film star from the 30s. Or it could be the disappointment of Sly Stallone's life. But the disappointment of your name, your choice, life. A disappoint. A poem about the way that idols have always got feet to clay. Really? They sent it to me at 1FM, and, and everybody send one in. I only had about... 200,000 this time. There's half a million listeners to this show. I want you all to send one in. Please. Did John Wayne have a famous horse? Because that was sort of mandatory, wasn't it, for cowboys at the time? He never did. He didn't have There's, trigger. Well, there you go. The disappointment of John Wayne's life. Well, because he never had a famous horse. No. Well, there you What's go. What's the point of that? What's the point of being a cowboy if not have a famous horse? That's like perk of the job, isn't it, really? Well, it's the only perk, isn't it? Mm. But then you get saddle sore. Well, he, he, he had lots of in, not famous horses, didn't he? Well, that we don't remember now. Yeah, but, you know, he still got a saddle sore, but he didn't have the perk of the famous horse. So that could be the point about that. It, it sounds like a song, sore. doesn't it? it the does. perk of the famous horse sounds like a Doors B-side. I'm saddle sore, but can't remember the horse's name. The history of the quiff. It's anonymous, this, but it's good. So I can I just back date a 1FM? Yes. Just a few seconds back. Aberdeen to Birmingham. My dad invented the quiff. He did it by mistake. He got up late for school one day, 
didn't have time to comb his hair. He ran to school and straight into assembly, with a little tuft of hair sticking out from the front of his head. The headmaster asked him in front of the whole school, What's that sticking out from your head, Cliff? Only the head had a stutter, so it came out quiff. Instead of cliff, we sounded like quiff. The next day, everybody had one, and that's how my dad invented the quiff. Oh, that's quite nice. That was I, quite I've lost a letter to that, but it was... <laughs> It isn't actually by Anonymous, it's by somebody whose name I've forgotten, which is the same thing. Well, do you want to stick around for a while? If we've got, we might not have any more time for, for any more quiff poems, but if we have, I'd like you to do some, because I'm well, quite I'll enjoying this. Well, I'll because the last Buster Barnsley is gone. The quiff is, is quite close to my heart, you know, but when I talk, bend down. <laughs> Ian McMillan's back. Oh. Ian, we're going to do, we're not going to do any more quiff poems, are we? Have we done, have we had our fill of quiff We could poems? have, perhaps one or two little quiffets. Later. Oh, right, okay. But this is another one I wrote on the train, I've been very productive on the train today, because the, the ticket collector, this woman, she had an embarrassing black stain on her upper lip. It was a felt tip pen mark. And she obviously didn't know about it. Everybody else did, but none of us said, hey, that's a black felt tip pen mark. We just stared at her. And she thought we liked her. And we didn't. It was just a black felt tip. I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if your life was all embarrassing moments? Mm. You know, like, like when you've got a bow ganging out or whatever yeah. sort of situations. It was like that. It was like the bow ganging out, but it was a black felt tip bug. Imagine that. So this is a life in embarrassing moments. Born, sick on midwife. Nursery, sister's pants on by mistake. School, Forgot to put Willie back in in exam to rushing back to history lesson. <laughs> Holy romance, forgot girl's name called her Jesus by mistake. Genuine mistake. First gig, presented Kit Kat wrapper instead of Pink Floyd ticket. Dog poor and at girlfriend's house. Dog poor and at girlfriend's house, two days running. Willie stuck in zip just before college interview. Wrong toilet, first day, new job. Call boss Jesus, genuine mistake. Glasses mended with garish tartan sellotape on wedding day. Honeymoon frightened to enter bedroom because of spider on ceiling. Birth of children always missed due to bus mix-up. Whole decades remembered only for embarrassing ties worn on important occasions. Laughed at something else at the same moment as told about the death of John Lennon. <laughs> Retired from job, drops gold watch. Zimmer frame painted pink for a joke. Willie stuck in coffin lid. Name printed wrong in obituary. Ghost frightened to enter room because of spider on ceiling. <laughs> that Epic. sounds like a personal history to me. A lot it, is, it is all true. All well, true. apart from the ending, but you don't yes. know. I'm and there's a yet. lot of Willies in there, I spotted. Well, I thought, you know, with it being a young youthful audience, I thought I might try and appeal to the young audience, because normally I wouldn't put Willies in my poems, but I thought, because I've been missed out on the uh, the uh, new generation poets, no bitterness here, I thought I might just put a couple of Willies in to try and get, you know, a new audience. Do you, do you really feel your life is, is a catalogue of embarrassment? Well, it is, because you remember the embarrassing things, don't yeah. you? You never remember the, all the whole days, the whole hours that went past without embarrassment. But, the, but you know the worst embarrassing story, oh, it's probably a million, but the worst embarrassing story I know, and it could well be an urban myth, but a friend of mine told it about himself as if it was true, and you wouldn't because it's very massive. They went around, stayed at a girlfriend's house, you know, he's quite about 16 or so, and a very uh, posh, well to do family. And um, in the middle of the night, he slept, walked, walked downstairs, and urinated on their sofa in his sleep and didn't know anything about it and then went back to bed. Oh. That's fairly embarrassing, isn't it? I've heard that. I think that is an urban. I think it probably so is. Yeah. My most embarrassing one was going to the wrong school by mistake. I was in this kid in the school. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in and they said, come on, start, you're late. And I got up on stage and did stuff that normally get laughs. And after half an hour, the teacher got up and said, uh, well, children, I can honestly say that's the best talk we've ever had from the Lancashire Fire Brigade. <laughs> <laughs> and in the next school, there was a Lancashire Fireman telling them I had gags, better than me, probably. This was one, one more quiff, one more quick quiff. This is a good one. The history of the quiff starts in 50s, we see, with Elvis, T Eddie and Teddy boys, and nowadays with Morrissey. His carefully coiffured construction will often defy gravity. It will enter a room before you do and divert attention from your cavities. That's Matt the Rushton. end, is it? That's the end. Right. Okay, well, that's, that's enough quiff poems for this week. Um, and we've set another competition, haven't we? And not a competition yeah, because there's no um, prizes. It's, it's the taking part that counts. Yes, you've got to write me The Sadness of John Wayne's Life in ten lines or the film star of your choice. Okay, well, Ian McMillan, thank you very much. And uh, we've got, what have we got coming up now? Just a load of pop, really, starting off with the Poppin' Jays and Monster Mouth. Mark Lamar, missing you already. <laughs> 